Hello there, and welcome to another Science Saturday. I'm your host, Noah Mugen. I hope you had a w fun, relaxing July, and we're glad to have you back. Today, we're going to be going over the science of buoyancy. I'm going to quickly go over the materials that we'll be using. If you don't have everything, don't worry, it's easy to follow along even without them. Today, we'll be using a large bowl, a citrus fruit, like an orange or, in my case, a lemon, a light, not very heavy cup, a kitchen knife, be careful with this, and water. One of the hallmarks of summer is relaxing in a pool. Whether it's at the community pool or a little blow up thing in your backyard, you'll be sure to find people escaping the sweltering temperatures with a lot of water. We've all been in pools, and as such we're all familiar with the concept of sinking and floating. An inner tube will float calmly on top of the water, while an unfortunately dropped phone will sink straight to the bottom of the pool. But have you ever stopped to question why these two objects behave so differently? Well, it's due to something called buoyancy, and that's what we're covering in today's video. First off, let's start with an experiment that will show us some of how buoyancy works. For this, you're going to need a large bowl, the citrus fruit, and lots of water. First off, fill the large bowl with water. Now, we're going to drop our fruit inside the bowl. But before that, what do you think is going to happen? Is this going to sink or is it going to float? Well, let's find out. As you can see, my lemon here is floating. But now we're going to peel this lemon. And now, take off the little bits at the end to, and open it up a little bit. And now that the lemon has been opened up, we're gonna drop it back into the water. Do you think that the peeled, opened up lemon will act the same as the original lemon did? Or is this one gonna sink? Well, let's find out. This lemon sunk to the bottom of the bowl by taking out the lemon's outer covering and opening up its insides, it changed from floating atop the water to just going straight down to the bottom. Why is that? Well, we're gonna be going over that right now. Everything in the universe has weight. That is the force of gravity pulling it down. The more mass something has, the more gravity will pull on it. And as such, the more weight that object will have. When we place something in water, gravity will pull it down to the bottom of the container. As that object goes down, it'll push water out of the way, which will then rise to the top in a process called displacement. The amount of water which was displaced to the top, which makes the water level rise, is equal to the volume of the object that was placed inside of it. When I place this die inside of this graduate cylinder, the water level rises by about mm, four, 4 milliliters. That means that that dye had a volume of 4 milliliters. Now, of course, water won't move away at the slightest compulsion. When we drop an object into water, the water will push back on the object with a force called the buoyant force. According to Archimedes' principle, the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the water which the object is trying to displace. If the force on gravity on the object is greater than the buoyant force of the water, then the object will sink. If the buoyant force of the water is stronger than the force of gravity on that object, then the object will float. Now this may seem pretty complicated, but it's actually really simple once you think about it. The force of gravity on the object is equal to its weight. And According to Archimedes' principle, the buoyant force of the water is equal to the weight of that same amount of water. Since when we drop an object into water, the displaced water has the same volume as that object. It, you're able to say that if an object is heavier than the same amount of water is, or whatever liquid it's trying to displace, then the object will sink. If the object is lighter than the same amount of liquid, it will float. Since we're dealing with the same volumes for both, you could say that the denser material or substance will sink. Density is the amount of mass per volume. And since we're dealing with the same volume, it's 
according to the amount of mass. This makes a lot of sense. Gravity will pull more on the heavier substance, and so the lighter substance will float up to the top. You can actually show Archimedes' principle with a simple experiment using a bowl of water, the one from earlier, and a light plastic cup. Turn the cup upside down and push it down into the water. When we turn the cup upside down, there was air inside of the cup. And when we pushed it down into the water, the air was lighter than the water was. And according to the force of buoyancy, it wouldn't go down and escape. As such, right now, there is air still inside this cup. Even, even if we bring it up a little bit like this, for the air to escape, it would have to go down past the rim of the cup and back out. However, water is much heavier than air, and so it's forcing the air up into the top of the cup. As you can see, you should be able to feel the cup trying to float up. However, now just turn the cup a little bit so that the air doesn't need to go down to escape the cup. You should see some bubbles in the water. The cup now has a much less volume than it did before because the water is now able to flood into it and take up the area that the air used to occupy. As such, it's displacing much less water. And as before, the um, plastic cup plus the air was lighter than the amount of water that that whole thing was trying to displace. The plastic itself is heavier than the corresponding amount of, amount of water that just the plastic and not the area inside is trying to displace. The force of gravity pulling just the plastic down when the water fills the inside is more than the buoyant force of the water pushing up. Let's go back to our lemon. If you remember, it floated when it had this peel on, but it sank when we peeled it and opened it up. Why is that? Well, when we took the peel off, we did decrease the lemon's weight. However, we also decreased its volume by a much larger amount, and as such, less water would have been displaced. Furthermore, when we opened it up and took the peel off, water was able to flood into the crevices, decreasing its effective volume because less water would need to be displaced. Because much less water is de displaced, this leads to the lemon having a greater density than the water. As such, the peel lemon sinks. And that's how buoyancy works. Objects which are denser than the liquid they're trying to displace will sink, while if the liquid is denser, then the object will float up to the top. That's why something like an inner tube will float on top of the water because it has a very large volume and is trying to displace a lot of water. But the inner tube is filled with air, and so it's not nearly as heavy as the water. Therefore, the buoyant force will keep it up on top of the water, even if you sit on it. That's why I can do this. Well, that about wraps up another Science Saturday. I had fun learning about buoyancy, I hope you did too. Stay safe, have fun, and I'll see you next month. Bye-bye.